here we present a case of a transvenous embolization of a thalamic anteroventricular arteriovenous malformation under transient cardiac standstill. The patient is a 60-year-old female who presented to the emergency room with acute onset of severe headaches, nausea, and vomiting. On examination, the patient was awake, however, she was lethargic and confused with no focal deficits. The initial CT scan demonstrated intraventricular hemorrhage in the lateral, third, and fourth ventricle with mild to moderate hydrocephalus requiring an EVD placement. MRI and MRI demonstrate a possible vascular malformation on the right side of the posterior thalamus and posterior portion of the third ventricle. Diagnostic cerebral angiography confirmed diagnosis of arteriovenous malformation. Observe the enlarged thalamoperator branch coming off the posterior cerebral artery. This artery is also known as a percheron artery. Internal carotid angiography also demonstrated small perforators going into the arterial venous malformation from the posterior communicating artery. The patient underwent initial transarterial embolization through that large thalamic perforator. However, there was still the majority of the arterial venous malformation alive. At this point, the only access to the arterial venous malformation is through that large draining vein. The patient underwent endovascular transvenous approach to the arteriovenous malformation for embolization. Under general anesthesia, access was obtained directly into the left jugular vein under ultrasound guidance. The microwire is navigated up into the sigmoidal transverse sinus the needle is then removed and exchanged for a 6 French sheet. Venogram is then performed to confirm location. We also obtain transarterial axis through the right femoral artery and place a 6 French diagnostic catheter into the right vertebral in order for us to get intracranial arterial roadmap for transvenous navigation. Using a three-axial system that consists of a microwire, microcatheter, and intermediate catheter, the system is navigating through the sigmoid and transverse sinus. Using the arterial roadmap, we carefully navigate the microwire followed by the microcatheter to the straight sinus into the draining vein or the arterial venous malformation. In this case, we decide to use an intermediate catheter for more support of the microwire. Carefully manipulating the microwire, we navigate into the proximal portion of the draining vein. Once we have access with the microwire, the microcatheter is navigated carefully. For accurate embolization of the malformation, it is imperative that we advance the microcatheter as close as possible to the nidus of the malformation. Angiogram drawn through the microcatheter confirms adequate microcatheter position. Another arterial angiogram is performed to obtain a roadmap of the posterior circulation. We're going to place a balloon in the basilar artery to achieve flow arrest. Here the microwire is navigated into the right PCA followed by the balloon. At the same time we are priming the microcatheter through the transvenous approach with DMSO. So by the time we have complete flow of rest from the basilar artery balloon, we are ready to inject onyx. Using rapid ventricular pacing, we obtain cardiac standstill by bringing the heart rate of the patient down to 10 to 15 beats per minute. Tracy cardiac standstill will allow 
onyx penetrator and into the AVM in a more steady fashion and prevent venous reflux. Onyx is injected in a steady pulsatile constant fashion, allowing the onyx to find its way into the capillaries of the arteriovenous malformation. Observe that there is a significant amount of reflux into the vein, into the draining vein, however, into the straight sinus is limited. If we observe more reflux into the straight sinus or into the vein, we stop, wait for about 30 to 45 seconds before we proceed with another onyx injection. In this second onyx injection, we observe the onyx finding other routes into the arteriovenous malformation, confirming that the balloon in the basilar artery is still inflating and creating flow of rest. We continue with the onyx injection in a similar fashion. Now the onyx is going to the uppermost part of the arteriovenous malformation. Now most of the arteriovenous malformation has been obliterated and the last upper portion is finalized. Angiogram of the posterior circulation demonstrate complete successful obliteration of the thalamic arteriovenous malformation. The patient woke up fine with no neurological deficit and once discharged home the next day. A two-month follow-up CT scan demonstrates normal ventricular size, MRI with no recurrence of the arteriovenous malformation, and diagnostic cerebral angiography with no evidence of arteriovenous recurrence. Thank you.